Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is um, Reese Bishop, founder of Life is a Game of Chess. I want to share with y'all um, a couple of um, openings that are very tricky and very tactical, and <laughs> you will win a lot of games with it, especially in bullet chess for people that don't even know what's going on. All right, so without further ado, let me get started. So the first one I want to introduce y'all is the Sky Scambit. Now, I know y'all probably read a lot of books on the Sky's Gambit and things like that, but this is um pretty much uh, a little bit different. And I haven't read any book about this or nothing, you know, but I'm about to show you what it is. So when he took that pawn on d4, usually the regular Sky's game, you take the pawn on d4. But in this case, you know, we don't take the pawn, we go bishop c4, right? So I see a lot of, like, literally... Every time I play like bullet chess or three minute blitz, 90% of the time, you know, my opponent is always going bishop c5. You know what I mean? And instead of taking, you go castle, right? And then 90% of the time, they're going knight f6. Now, I've seen other players play, you know, maybe d6, you know, things like that, or they may play a6 or whatever, things like that. But usually, d6 and knight f6 is the move. But if they play knight f6 in there, then you immediately go e5. And usually the best move, or at least the computer-wise, you know, the computer always say d5. But i also seen a lot of players play d5 because they feel as though if they don't play this d5, then their position would be a lot cramped. So they play d5, you know, thinking that maybe, you know, players are going to go bishop b5 or whatever, and then he could come to knight e4. But in this case, I don't do none of that. I don't do none of that, man. I'm I'm all about attacking. I'm all about, you know, hitting it where it hurts. So E catches F6. That's what you want to do. And, of course, they're going to take their bitch up because they don't want to lose a piece. Now, I see games where people play F catcher G7. This is wrong. I don't, I don't do F catcher G7. I go rook E1 check first. That's the first thing I go to. If they go bishop E6... Then white goes knight g5. Now, this is a blunder. You see queen catches f6? This is a blunder. Because after queen catches f6, then knight catches e6. So as you see this arrow, you know, if f catches e6, then the queen h5 check. And then if he goes g6, queen catches c5, and we're running a piece. And I'm telling y'all guys, 99.9% .9 of the games that I play... Especially in bullet chess, they always cast a queen side, and that's also a blunder because after this is g5 or whatever, that I'm telling you, though, know, like they resign, they literally resign. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's crazy, y'all, because um, it, it's a few people that will like continue to play or whatever, things like that, but at the end of the day, man, they they lose, they literally lose or whatever. This is g5. It's the answer, you know, they may go queen f5, you take, and then they'll take back, and then at um, g captures d8, taking a rook, we're up in material, you know, we're literally winning this game off the bat, right? And there's some other stuff, though, and I want to take this back, you know, um... I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, what is this? Okay, after e5, right? And then d5 and everything. Yes, we say um, e catches f6. Now, let's say that, you know, he takes and he takes, right? And let's say we go uh, rookie one, right, chat? So this is just another example, though. This is if he doesn't uh, take on queen catches f6. So, like, for instance, if he goes bishop e6, and we go knight g5, threatening to take this um, bishop, the move is queen d5. That is the move. All right? So then, after queen d5, we go knight c3. Very tactical, right? So obviously the pawn can't take because the queen catches d5. The bishop can't take because the rook is pinning this bishop. So if he takes his knight, he will automatically lose his queen. 
So that's the reason why we go knight c3. So not only is knight c3 a developing move, but it's also an attacking move because we are attacking the queen. So the queen knows he can't take this knight because he'll lose his queen because the bishop can't take because the rook is pitting this bishop. So the move is queen f5. So then we'll go pawn g4 and then let's say queen catches f6. So now the move is knight d5. Knight d5, right? So then after knight d5, you know, he already hit in the queen on f6. You know, um, for instance, let's say he goes queen g6, right? Then we can immediately go knight catches e6. And this is automatically losing with queen g6. So if he goes f catches e6, then we automatically go rook catches e6. And his queen is automatically lost. He, ain't, he really has no choice but to take this rook. But then knight catches c7 check, king d7, and then queen uh, knight catches e6, and he loses his queen, and we should be able to win this game. Alright, but let's say he doesn't go uh, queen catches uh, or queen g6. Let's say he goes uh, queen d8. Now, this is the move. If he goes queen d8, we have this beautiful move rook catches e6. So the whole point is, if he goes f catches e6, we got knight catches e6. So now, as you see, the queen can't take this knight because of knight catches c7 check, and we win this queen. You know? And I've seen um, players uh, in one of my games, they go queen d6, and I automatically go bishop f4. You know? And again, I'm, I, I developed the last piece of, one of my last piece or whatever, Again, he still can't take the knight because, as you can see, the knight catches c7 check, winning the queen. So either way, is it still uh, a win-win for, you know, white? And then um, we have this beautiful, not this, not taking with this, but we have this beautiful move, uh, knight catches c7 check. And the beautiful move about this is not only are we forking the king and the rook, but also this knight on e6 can also take on knight catch to c5, uh, hitting the queen as well. And then at the same time, we're also still attacking the rook. This is just a dominating position for white, which is just mad crazy. So that was just with the Scott's Gambit. <laughs> And again, with this move, I haven't seen any book. I haven't seen any book with it. All right. And I'm going to show you. Uh, let me go back to another one. I'm going to show you another uh, gambits and stuff. So E4. Oh, my bad, y'all. I want to take this out. So here's another one. E4, C6, D4, D5. And usually, a lot of y'all so used to the knight c3 move and everything. In games, I play f3. If f catchers, I mean, like literally 90, probably 90 percent of the players play f catchers e4, uh, f catchers e4, which is what I take, and then they play e5, threatening queen h4 check. So I stop it with knight f3. Um, e catches d4. And then bishop c4. The whole point is, is if he goes bishop g4, that would be a blunder because the bishop catches f7 check. If he takes knight e7 check, and then if he comes back, I can still take back with queen captures g4, <laughs> which is awesome. And then as you see, I got this f file. This is the whole point of the f3, uh, taking back with the f pawn because now I have this f file, which is real open. And I'm telling y'all, y'all, and, and bullet chess, man, it's just crazy. For people that really don't know what they're doing, it's just so crazy. So after, um, I'm going to tell y'all something. So after Bishop C4, I've seen players play um, Knight F6, which is what I see them play. And I go point E5, they go Knight D5, and then I castle immediately just so I can bring my Rook to the F file, right? This is what I do. Um, those have some people play on uh, 97, but this is actually a trick because he's giving up his pawn. You don't want to take this pawn because of bishop c5 because you'll lose your queen. And and if you take it, the knight will capture because the knight was already supporting a bishop. So that's not what you want to do. So usually in positions like this, I'll go uh, king h1 just to make sure I don't get no, you know, 
um, pinned or whatever, things like that. I want to keep my king to safety, right? Um, after this move, they usually go knight b6. I'll go like bishop d3, and then they'll go uh, bishop e7. You know, which is pretty much the regular move to play and everything. Oh, excuse me, y'all. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, it's been a long evening. Trust me, it's been a long evening. Uh, but after Queen E1, uh, they usually uh, castle uh, king side and everything, and then usually my plan is Queen G3. Uh, I don't know why, but I have like maybe 60% of the people play A6. I don't know why. And this is just in bullet. I take threaten the queen, capture G7. You know. Um, but then I also see like people play um, Bishop E6. You know, I still play this. And you know they'll play pawn g6, but the whole purpose of them going to g6 is so I can go knight d2 to e4, and then soon sooner or later f6. You know, which is crazy. So if y'all don't like uh, a lot of opening variations and whatever things like that, if you like to attack whatever, get the game over with. I'm telling y'all, man, the it's called the fantasy. This is something that I play. It's just very tactical. Things like that. So I'm just giving y'all some ideas to actually play. You know. So. Uh, I'm going to show y'all another one. Uh, I don't know why I keep going. Let's do this. Um, the Dust Gambit. Oh, shoot. My bad, y'all. I'm going to show y'all another one. The Dust Gambit, which is pretty much what I play. A lot. I mean, this does game is the reason why that I be like a 2300 in three minute blitz. Because I just be crazy winning. So, like d4, e5, d catch, d5, d6. Literally, I literally say 98% of the people play, um, they take the point automatically because it's not something that a lot of people see. So, this is usually the stuff that I play. Uh, usually they'll go knight f3, I'll go knight c6, uh, they'll go e4, queen e7, uh, maybe bishop e2, I'll go bishop g4, they'll castle, I castle, and maybe like, maybe 50% of the people will go knight c3, and this is already a, a blunder. Um, let, let, let me tell y'all something, I know y'all, like, I know y'all already see this, bishop catches h2. But this is the thing about this. After bishop catches a2, if he goes knight catches h2, and I take the queen, he can still take my bishop on g4, king b8, and then um, they could go rook catches d1. So as you see, he has a knight, bishop, knight, bishop. So he has all his minor pieces in two rook. Whereas I have two minor pieces in one rook. So if white played the game right and everything, he could really come up with a strong attack, which is like real crazy if he's playing the game right. So, and this is if you're playing with somebody really strong. Uh, honestly, if I'm playing with somebody like really strong or whatever, um, usually what I do first, I go Bishop Catchers um, F3 first. So, hold on, let me go here. So, like I said, if he goes Knight C3, I usually would take Bishop Catchers H3 first. F3 first. Because the whole point of this, I ain't got to worry about him getting extra material. And half of the time in bullet chest, man, they'll take, and then I'll go bishop catches ace2 check. They'll take, and then I'll go queen ace4 check. And then he'll go king g1, and then now you can take the queen. Because the whole purpose of this, if he goes rook catches d1, now I could go knight f6 and everything. And then if he goes bishop b3, now I could go ace5. The whole point of ace5 is to support uh, this knight on g4. But also, like, for instance, if he goes a3 and I go knight g4, now I'm threatening all uh, this check. But if, if for some reason he decides to take, now I can take back with the h pawn because now I have um, a queen and a rook open file on an h file, which is, like, very unpleasant for white because I'm already threatening me. So, so that's one of the, I mean, that's just winning the queen. Um, but I could show you some other stuff with the dust gambit. Besides just taking a queen, this is what I want to show you. So queen e7, bishop b2, bishop g4, he castles, he castle queen side. 
So let's say he goes queen e1. Because a lot of people do this. They go queen e1. I go h5 automatically. After they go h3, I'll go knight e5. Simple as that. And of course, the whole purpose of it, if he takes, we'll go ace capture g4. Not not a problem at all. Um, I'll see a lot of um, players, they'll play uh, maybe knight g5. I'll just go g5. And the knight is pretty much trapped. Like, it can't go nowhere. So I'm pretty much winning material back. But it's not just me winning material back. Now I got an uh, open h file. And now the king would be soon under attack or whatever, so which is not a very good look for him, right? Or if he does, um, like I said, tape out. Let's say if he goes knight h2, you know, I still have this beautiful move, uh, queen h4, which is really nothing that he can really do to uh, stop a mate. I mean, he can stop the mate if he decides to go, uh, let's say, um, well, actually, he really can't stop the mate. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking, but he, he really can stop the mate. Because um, even after the bishop catches g4, uh, you can take back. And then I'm still threatening to mate. So it's like, even if he does take, you know, this is pretty much me, right? Um, if he does something like, um, let's say f3. You know, trying to get some breathing room, you can automatically block it with G3. And even with that, that's still <laughs> very unpleasant for white and black is just still winning. You know, so I'm just giving you ideas to play, man. Like, because when y'all play bullet chess or whatever, I'm telling you, like, a lot of people, they don't know a lot of these moves or whatever. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy. All right. So, and that's that's what the dust game is. All right. So now, I'm going to show another, I'm going to show you the last opening that I usually play in Bullet, right? The last thing that I play. Um, the Wing Gambit, alright? This is usually if somebody plays C5, um, B4, C catches, B4, A3, right? And most people would play D5, E catches D5, Queen catches D5, and I'll go Knight F3. I don't take the point right away, I go Knight F3. Now here's the thing. Now I've seen people play this though. Bishop g4. I'll take the pawn. Bishop catches f3. Queen catches f3. But then they see this shot. They see the whole queen e5 check. You know, threatening my rook on a1. So once I go bishop e2, as you see, it'll take on a rook. I'll go queen catches b7. And then when the queen takes the knight, because I see a lot of people in bullet takes the knight, and then I'll go queen c8 mate instead of taking a rook because that's what he's thinking. He's thinking in bullet, I'm, he's going to take the rook, but they usually miss this move, queen c8 mate. This is just in bullet, so. So that move, and I'm going to show you another thing. It's not just that, you know, because not everybody will play that. So I'm going to show you something else, but that's just like something basic um, to show y'all. But let's let let's go with something a little bit deeper. Let's go um E catches D five, Queen catches D five, Knight F three. We'll see uh maybe E five. My bet E five. And usually uh, a lot of people play this, so I usually take this. Bishop catches B four, I go C three. Usually they'll go Bishop C five, I'll go Knight C three. Um I see a lot of people play Knight C six. Which I think the best move is always knight f6. Knight f6 is always better, you know. Uh, and the reason why knight f6 is better is because number one, it gives them a chance to castle early and everything. But also with knight f6, um, black can actually start an attack by moving to pawn e4. Maybe, not maybe, but yeah, he, he, he'll be able to start the pawn e4 and it, it's a crazy attack. Uh, if y'all need to analyze that, y'all can look that up. But a lot of people that I play, like maybe probably 80% of the players that I play, play knight c6. And usually it's just, it just always ends bad for them. Um, I go knight b5, as y'all can see, I'm threatening knight c7. Um, check, one in the queen. And I don't know why, but I get like maybe 50, 60% of the people play knight f6, which is a blunder. And I go knight c7, taking a queen, and they resign, right? 
But then I get some good players. They'll play, um, uh, let's say, um, this should be six. You know, stopping, you know, the 97 check or whatever, things like that. So then I'll do moves like um, bishop c4, you know. So the whole point is uh, sacrificing my bishop is if queen captures c4, knight d6, and I'll take the queen on c4, right? So that stuff. So... But then I see people, they'll play, uh, well, this, this is actually what happened to me. I had one person play queen e4 check on me first. I just go king f1, not really worried about uh, my king not castling because I feel like I'm having um, a great attack, pretty much. And, but e but the thing is, people will see this move, queen catches c4, and I do, like they'll see this move, right? But as soon as they get you in check, I move my king over, and for some reason, I don't know what it is, but when they're playing bullet chess, they're already thinking that I'm threatening knight c7 check, uh, winning the rook or whatever, and that's what they're paying attention to. And if and they, in their minds, uh, psychologically, they're thinking like, well, as long as I don't take the bishop on c4, I'm good because he just moved queen e4 check. And I just move my king over. So now he's already thinking in his mind, like, yes, I'm about to cast the king side. But psychologically, I don't know what it is. Psychologically, they forget about knight d6 check. Because psychologically, in a bullet chess game, they're thinking that as long as I don't take this bishop, I'm good. But they'll still miss this knight d6 check. And I'm still winning the queen. So just keep that in mind, man. Bullet chess, man. You can win this with um, 2300s. Uh, 2400 is because honestly it it happens <laughs> and I ain't talking about just once in a lifetime thing this happened multiple times and it's still happening to this day so I'm just saying if y'all gonna play the wing gambit man y'all should check it out in bullet chess games for real so this stuff that I play and, and y'all can actually look me up on leechess.gore y'all see that in my bullet chess I'm like 2200 and something in my three minute blitz or blitz I'm like 23 something, 2300 and something. So, like, literally, I'm not lying to y'all at all. Y'all can look at me up, whatever, you know. So, but yeah, that that's one of the tricks uh, with the wing gambit. Uh, yeah, man, that was the last uh, opening tricks that I just showed y'all. Obviously, I got more, but like I said, man, uh, stay tuned. Just keep looking at my videos, man. I got a lot of other stuff to show y'all, man, that I haven't showed y'all at all. So um, if you like this video, please like, share, share this video, comment, you know, share your thoughts. I'm all about y'all sharing your thoughts, man. Like, you know, I'm sharing stuff, man. Like, I'm always learning and whatever. I'm all about learning and things like that. And I could definitely learn from y'all. So if y'all actually have something that y'all want to share, man, please go on my, uh, my channel and just share exactly your thoughts and ideas and things like that. And also, man... Don't forget to subscribe, for real, man. Don't forget to subscribe, man. I got a lot of good stuff to share with y'all. All right, y'all. Peace. Have a nice night. All right, y'all.